Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have a 2v2 for you guys today on Hell in a Very Small Place. I'm teaming up with Honda Hun and we're going up against Byron Joe, also known as Wonton, and the second lieutenant, Whiskey, who was a pleasure to play on the same team as in another game that hopefully you guys will see up here real soon on the channel. So I'm taking Blue Dragon's Armored because, I, I don't know, it's a fun deck for me. I kind of enjoy it. It's nice. It's a little goofy. And I'm headed up right into Foxtrot, basically ignoring Bravo for right now as my ally takes position in golf. So he did also give me some very nice helicopter support at the start, kind of annoyed that we couldn't shoot down the L-17K. Uh, if you guys know why we rolled all misses there, if it's something about the missile mechanics or anything like that, I'm happy to hear it in the comments. Uh, I've heard before you can basically move them back to tilt the helicopter up to have a better chance of hitting, but I don't know if that's just um, one of those old wives' tales of Wargame Red Dragon. So. A good initial engagement here from Honda Hun, getting his Martyr 2s up and forward, taking out some KTs, really putting pressure on Whiskey, especially with the 2A1 getting up in position, and this is possibly the most impactful set of engagements in the entire game right here in the opening section, because those are Modernas, that's an M84AN. My opener got a little bit split, but we get a weapons jammed crit on one of the Modernas, and then this M84AN is taking out a couple of cheaper uh, units. It does actually kill my Chumont, which I think makes me very sad here in just a second. But I've bought a Peace, uh, Peace Pheasant 2, rather, and we're going to be going in to kill him. So yeah, gets a couple nice kills there. But seeing these Modernos and not a lot of support, everything is going up to them. So the Peace Pheasant gets the AAN. That's 110 points right there. Peace Pheasant out scot-free. And then with the Rangers popping up over the ridge, M41 A1s popping up over the ridge, there's the Modernos. And let's see what they can do. 10-point kill. Yeah, my M41s are taking out that Stab. Uh, command Infantry, and Kiyomaru Shiki is providing all the firepower I need. Second Moderna still has its weapons jammed. Two kills. Two Super Heavies down and a Recon Tank down in that quick succession, and we have Foxtrot well and truly. Now, the question you're going to ask yourselves potentially is why didn't I exploit this? The reason is, I wasn't happy with my anti-air. I just had the K263 and a Mistral team, not enough for anti-plane work. And I only had the one Mortar as well, so I was just hoping, you know, we cross through the center, we have a point disadvantage, let's double down on it with command vehicle. And then uh, Whiskey over here was doing some really nice work in golf that we had to sort of handle together. So Ranako Yekuri around the side, got a couple of nice kills, and then pressured into my ally's mortar. And the frontal combat that we had, I guess, in that zone is really just made up for by the nice exploit around the side. If we take a look at neutral for just a second, Ranako Yekuri, Erikois Yekuri, XA-180s, Wonderful use of the horizontality of this zone. Apologies if you guys can hear the sirens. Shouldn't be able to. I'm going to try and get rid of them. But, uh, well, it's a cost of living in the city, which I do. So, all times a day, including apparently the middle of the night. And you get uh, you get sirens going. So, that uh, just is what it is. So, Salamandra is coming up here. And I did lose the Kiyomaroshiki to a plane. So, I think we can see... Yeah, that's its corpse right there. My smoke was just a second or two too late, and that really did hurt. I uh, probably saw it while I was either looking over on the right or zoomed in, but that did hurt. It's part of why I didn't want to exploit. I tried to anyway. I got punished. Um, it was Whiskey Salamandra. I think it was Byron Joe's plane. And then over on this side, the BVP M80As did worry me, so I don't really have anything here. It's what you trade for that Foxtrot opener uh, of just oppressive firepower in that direction. And we get one of the BVPs, but... There's a couple more. I don't really have anything on this side short of base defense. And so that's going to be the callouts right there. I should have probably handled that before calling in the Jiwicha. If I could go back and change something about this game, it would be that. It would be the buy order. Get my flank secured, and then cap this zone. Because as nice as it is to get you know, plus one ticking on this map, it's going to take a while for me to lose Foxtrot like this. And I probably should have just made sure that it was harder to do something like this flanking attack. So Peace Pheasant 2 was reloaded and ready to go. One, two BVPs killed right there. I mean, that's only 30 points, but it does sort of help with this flank. My OH-60 hanging on by a thread is going to be taken out by those BVPs that just have truly insane damage output. One of the worst things about fighting against Entente, which we do know it is Entente now because of the Modernas up top and the BVPs, which are, of course, Yugoslavian. But, uh, I don't know, I think this is going to be fine. We have the Nana Sanshiki coming up here, Nana Yonshiki A's, and I bought a second piece of 2 which was probably a bit of a panic buy, considering my allies' tigers coming over to support, so many thanks to Honda Hun there for helping me hold that side against that. If, they, if the BBPs got in, that would be pretty rough. So yeah, we take them both down, 
and then we're going over onto this section and that should be tidied up. But um, okay, let's take a look at this. Thermomig and a Super Gallop. This guy, 135 points. Super Gallop, 130 points. That's 265 points in the air after losing two Super Heavies in Foxtrot. This told me there's not much on the ground at all. So as soon as these come in, I'm actually, I'm happy. I'm here for it because it means that this position is going to be secure for that much longer before my opponent could possibly do any sort of attack in Syria on that side from Whiskey is going to be um, damaged, potentially taken out, but I don't think the K263 quite had the range, so that plane gets out, but we do get one, two from, uh, from Byron Joe, so both of those planes, 265 points dead at the hands of a single F4F KWS, and a little bit of light support from a Mistral on my end, so these 0810s, that's going to be Militia. I'm just popping the Nanayanshiki's A, uh, Nanayanshiki A's forward to take those shots, get a couple of free kills. And with the support from the Mistral, this is the sort of peak that I want to be doing instead of having my Super Heavy get killed, of course. Um, but this is going to be enough to allow me to sort of sit back and help on the right, because um, I think we missed it. I Rocket Pub planed in here. I, I don't know why we're missing so much in the replay today. <laughs> it's sort of my job to not do that. Um, but yeah, we're, we all make mistakes. So MX-13 BTTs, more vehicles, and double piece pheasant 2. These guys were both already in my bank. They'd already paid for themselves. Or at least one of them had. The second one was getting close. And we're just coming out and shooting in just to, I guess, make the air tab the scariest part of a Blue Dragon's armor deck, which I think it's a uniquely powerful air tab for an armor deck. You have a piece pheasant 2s to support, and yeah, these are anti-tank. But they're also phenomenal because they do have four missiles at peeling apart infantry fighting vehicles and exploiting into gaps later on. So now we're talking about attacking into Echo as well. I mean, I think this was also an observation about where we'd seen mortars firing from. So double M84, that will scare off my Shiki A's who are not smart enough not to attack in. But then again, these guys turned their side armor and turned into a nice exploit shot. I popped myself back just a little bit from Fox. And with the uh, with units from Whiskey moving in here, this is a little urgent. So, <laughs> Gazelle Celtic, of course, does not have rocket pods. That Mistral is not going to be able to do anything about this. But the Tiger will. So once again, saved by the PH2 Tiger. And then my Jiwi Cha does get his guns online. This is what I'm talking about, though. The Peace Pheasant 2s, they reload relatively quickly if they don't take any damage. And as long as I move my Jiwi Cha, we should be fine here. So they peeled apart those KTs like it was nothing and should buy me enough time to move stuff over. Now... Mechanizovna Pesh, if these guys were in the BVPs that moved across the bridge, that would have been a lot scarier. If they gotten into the woods, even just one double stack in the woods is a big problem. Could have potentially killed my Chumat, my Nanosan Shikis, made this a persistent issue. As it is, we have base defense, so the Susak Day, and then KM-163 is 25 points. It's going to mulch all of this infantry at range. So, yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Basically, it doesn't reload, I think. Just continual continual fire, all of those 1,100 rounds. It's just it's, it's nonsense. It's a little goofy. Plus, the Saber was actually coming back in. So, Rocket Pod Planes, a little bit of an odd choice, but they can get nice return on value if you shoot the right targets. And these guys aren't going to be able to close because they're immediately stunned, killed 40 points, and not too much of an issue for me on that side. So, um, two more M84As. And these guys do have better luck. So my Shiki A's, this time engaged frontally by a tank that's way out of their weight class. Uh, twice as expensive, but way better, way better guns. I think way better armor as well. Yep, 6 versus 13. So those two could chew through a fair number of Shiki A's and double stacks without too much trouble at all. We are still kind of struggling in golf. I'm getting a couple of KM-110 siege guns and then one, two MA4A's. Done. 140 points, my Peace Pheasant 2s are swimming in cost-effectiveness right now, and uh, that really was sort of the final nail in the coffin for me to say, okay, we're going to throw some things my allies' direction, M41A1s and quad stacks, K200s, the M41A1s, 10 points each, but look at the veterancy, these guys are at, um, oh yeah, veteran, not elite, but it's a lot of veterancy for a little tank, and 10 points each, these guys hit pretty hard. The recon version is considered broken, but these guys, unfortunately, not the recon version. And my Saber loses line of sight just at the last second and doesn't get those rocket pods off. It would have been a really nice shot there. Probably would have killed a unit of Ranico, maybe even collateral damage, a fair bit of other units in the area. So let's speed things up just a bit here. 
I do also just want to say, the KWS play from Honda Hun, some of the best that I've seen in a long time. So I lost my KT-63. He turns in, takes out that seed plane. We did damage it with the Mistral before, but he does get the kill there. And the KWS, I think, racked up something like four or five planes by the end of this game. Just really, really incredible. The Chaser from the L-17K, by the way. L-17K, dedicated helicopter hunter. Does not have the range to engage the KWS, and at 90 points is not a throwaway helicopter hunter. It needs to get value out. Um, it can't really be a distracting piece, and it's going right over the center. KWS moved back intentionally to bait this plane in, and that's going to be running into a Celtic, a Roland 3. He's trying to turn out, evac ordered, and it's not going to be fast enough. So 90 points chasing too far in. If you're behind on board position, assume that your enemy has a better AA net than you do, and that sort of dive is going to end in misery. But still, Whiskey, wonderful job in golf, man. Look at this. We have all this uh, board presence in Fox, we've been trading well there, and we still cannot get anything forward uh, in golf itself. So we are going to have to attempt it together. Combined push, Vabs moving up, MX-13 BTTs moving up, M4-1A1s, all of this weight of numbers just to try to clear this out, which, yeah, that's an effective push. If this were a more contested game in Fox, I'd be sweating, because Bravo is capped for red, we've capped Fox, but we haven't been able to cap golf, and if you guys could counter cap it, then any con uh, contest in Foxtrot, if this was counter-capped, would be leading to a Red 4 victory. So, double M91 v Hor, and I really have to say, this is the third double stack of tanks that's tried this. The first one moved over to the side, the second one got taken out by double Peace Pheasant, and you can already tell what's coming. So, I can see these guys, they're not in the woods, they should be in the woods, they should have smoke, they should have recon around them, and that's 230 point tanks right there. One, two, done. And we get out. So, yeah, I mean, if I was the Red 4 team at that point, I probably would have conceded, because it's just, it's so many numbers, and when you see both players being able to uh, focus on one side and still have an advantageous board position in the other, that usually means that, um, that things are not going your way. So, uh, it would have been understandable to concede there, but kudos to both Byron Joe and Whiskey for staying in it. So. Uh, never counting yourself out, having the persistence to just do the best that you can with it, make it a harder game than expected, uh, is always a good thing as well. Saber's coming in, and unfortunately I missed my line of sight there again. Actually, that was a fire in position, I'm not sure why the Saber didn't shoot. Rocket pod planes and I are not the best of friends, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but we do get out, the Coop M4 not able to fire before I evac fully. So, uh, Pion on this side was a little bit scary, Yebagon of course don't have the AP to take that out. I was hoping just to distract and get the M4-1A1s nearly out of fuel just by getting the front line into position there, but the Pion retreats back and that is very nice. Unfortunately, we have crushed through some KTs, and KTs at 20 points, if I can kill two of them, which this quad stack already has, I think, or is this the second? Um, I think they killed, oh, that's a Pion. We already killed two KTs. Paid for itself, 40 points for 40 points right there. And any other additional shots are just gravy. So, providing a little bit of meat, K200's providing a bit of meat, and we see the Pions on this side. So, let's see, Peace Pheasant 2 is coming out again, looking for those kills. There it is. Just think about how quickly these guys reload, it's just, it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy. And we're even diving the Kub M4, so that's going to get killed, and that is going to be a concede from uh, Byron Joe, also known as Wonton. Um, but Whiskey stays in, and we have a couple more minutes of good fighting if you guys are around to see it, and then I'll show you some of the... Uh, MVP units afterward, which, um, spoiler alert, it's going to include those Peace Pheasants for sure, although I really didn't look at it after that because we were playing another couple games, I think, that evening. So KFV-25 is moving forward, putting some auto cannon fire on the Pion side armor when they can, and there's still more Anico, so just really persistent presence. I think, I think it was just the air tab in this was just crazy, so once we got an advantage in Fox and started really bullying with the air tab, it's a hard thing to recover from, for sure. But, uh, yeah, so we're pushing forward KFE-25s, shooting in against infantry is never a good thing, and we actually get the T-72M1K, so it's stunned there from the H1J, not going to be able to really damage the armor too much, but Nanyoshiki A's are able to close, and that will damage that, because these Shiki A's, I love them so much in this deck, because you can take them at, at elite, and they deal heat rounds, 10 rounds per minute auto-loaded. It is the funky auto-loader as well, so you get 4 quick shots, and then a long reload. But those four quick heat shots with that veterancy, that many, that many potential crits, is truly amazing. Um, yeah, so at this point we have Golf, we have Fox, Bravo has been completely ignored because, quite frankly, we don't need it. 
And then we're just going to be gathering here for a push into Echo for as long as is necessary, getting some value where we can, and just prepping this this whole push. So I have a key Marshiki moving back up in Fox finally. I have some AA coming up here. I'm going to wait for both of these to get in position before I go for Echo. And in the meantime, uh, dueling rocket pod planes, MiG-21 MFs, 85 points, wonderful rocket pod planes, a bit more expensive than the Saber. So this is part of why I like the Saber. It flies slow, has zero ECM. You have to be sure that it's worthwhile. But look at these Ranico. Done. And unfortunately, a bit of a miss there from the second Saber because they were still on the same target. But uh, we have another one coming in, and these Ranico, very expensive, 35 points each. Done right there. Two runs like that. This guy's paid for himself. And even if I, I lose a little bit of value, yeah, that's all right. We killed both the Ranico. We held this position. It's going to allow us to get other sorts of value from the units that we saved, because double Ranico would have cleared this out, no problem. Panzergrind down to two strength, searching Su-85 at seven. A little bit of friendly fire there from my siege guns as well. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have a habit of um, occasionally friendly firing Honda Hun, which uh, I swear it's not intentional. It's not really meant to uh, to be like that. But we tend to play very close to each other on the board, so a little bit of accidental fire. And I'm not really used to the long reload time artillery pieces either, so uh, a bit more practice, and we should have a couple fewer unfortunate incidents. So KWS, evac ordered, and I have the wrong timing here in my planes. I don't have any ASFs up, and that MiG-913 S from Whiskey is circling around. Wonderful loiter there. I'd expected it to evac. It did not. And I lose the other piece pheasant, which uh, that really did hurt. That was pretty bad. I-290 was spotted, but the rocket plane missed, and so he's still alive. But uh, double K6, uh, KF-16C gets one, gets two. ASF and the Syria taken out there and evac ordered. And then a Rafal here as well, and it really did turn into a big plane slugfest. I think Whiskey was trying to reestablish some control over the skies before he was going to try to push in, but getting a little too close again, Hawk Pip 2 is firing, Rafal firing as well, and I think we've taken down a couple of ASFs. He does have double availability because his ally is gone, so it does kind of throw off the count a little bit. I'm not really sure how many he has left at this point, but uh, I'm sure it's at least one because... Uh, I don't think we've killed four of his ASFs. We killed some other stuff from uh, Byron Joe earlier on. But that is going to be the game. Blue Dragon's Armored. <laughs> Surprise pet favorite deck of mine, but uh, I quite enjoy it. So, 4,605 kills, 2,300 losses. Very lopsided game there just because of that initial engagement and the capitalization on it that we were able to do. But Whiskey did a really nice job. Lots of those losses coming in the last couple minutes of the game. Before that, 1,666 points of kills. We both took it a little bit on the chin, clearing out golf. So had it been uh, a bit more even in other sections, I think that would have been a knockdown drag out fight. Peace Pheasant 2, look at that kill list, man. AN, 84, 84, 91 Vihor, Kub M4. Goodness gracious sakes, alive. And even the Kiyomaro Shiki that died, it killed two Modernos before it. So... While well, it would have been nice to keep it alive, the two Modernos, the two Prom S's, that's 40 points apiece for the Prom S's. Wonderful return on investment there. And the other piece of Pheasant 2, M91, BVPs, two Pions. Can't really ask for more. So that's going to be all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.